um, I, I'm not going to say astrologically because I don't know exactly where everything is and that sort of thing. But in a sense, we are going out of Mercury retrograde. The planets have been shifting. They're going to be shifting again by the middle of the month. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that's happening for all of us because of the, the shifting. We just had the eclipse. So those energies were really profound. And I think it's, uh, you know, what we said last time was, you know, like really we just needed to sort of go with what the flow is and who we are and and just not take everything so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So seriously around us because there's going to be just so much changes. And I think the, the thing that it's really important for us to realize is that if we're moving into different energy, these energies have been here for a long time. And as we're getting closer to the bottom of the barrel, that's where all the junk has been sitting. So we're stirring it up like uh, like a big mud puddle and all the stuff is coming and we're just saying, oh, how do we deal with it? It's been here all along. It's just that it has to be pulled out and cleared out. So I think for anybody who is recognizing themselves as a light worker, it's important for us to just ground ourselves in the, you know, in the new earth energy that we want to see the earth however we want to see it. We are have been lighthouses. We are the bridge into a new energy. So, you know, what we've done is we've crossed that bridge and now we're anchoring, we're anchoring ourselves as a lighthouse so that all the other people who are coming uh, uh, over that bridge, we, they, they see us as that beacon so that, that, and we don't have to know what they went through. We just have to be there just to hold that energy. And, realize that all the stuff that's showing up it's not for us to deal with and and take into us it, it is it is past histories it is past stuff that that has to be cleared in order for us to move into a new energy so that's that energy is you know we, we're getting cosmic help to help clear that energy so when you are confronted with stuff you have to just stop and sit with it for a moment and just say, is this about me or is this about the collective? And if it's about the collective, just let it flow through you. If it's about you, just say, okay, I don't need to deal with, with that anymore. That's old energy. That's karma. I'm releasing that karma. Um, and I know that there's all kinds of affirmations that you can use. And maybe, Erica, you've got some affirmations that you can share. But just to release the karma of, of the past, we don't need to. We don't need to hold on to what happened in 20 lifetimes ago. And you know that person down the street is. Yeah, we've got something. Is like just release them from the karma. Release those contracts and those old contracts, and just let it flow through you. That sounds awesome. So it says for May 19th, I mean, for May 9th, you may find the theme of the day is self-expression, but in the demonstration, it would be wise to make it have a point. And I was thinking about this the other day because sometimes people like, like we want to be indignant about stuff or we want to express ourselves, but what what's the purpose? Because, and I think if this is going along with what we're saying about some of the things that we share, like, oh, I learned this new fact. Do I want to share it? What really is the purpose behind it? What, Because what, I think we've gotten to the point where people have gotten to the point where we share without even a purpose. We're just spitting stuff out, facts, ah, because we're just, we're so wanting to express ourselves, but what is the purpose behind the expression? Do I need to argue about when someone says the word history that I gotta be, it's her story. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're so much protesting about every damn thing, but what's the purpose? What, what, why so much energy? You know, people arguing about, you know, artifacts and arguing about history. I saw this one lady say Roman Roman history is fake, or she was basically saying oh, a part of the culture of Rome is fake. Like Rome is a city, 
but there is no Roman culture is what she was saying. And people actually started channels just to argue with her about her views on Rome. People are starting channels to argue about Egyptian um, history. And, and it's like, did you ever care about any of this stuff? Like how important is any of this stuff in relation to your life? If you live and die, it does it affect how much money you make? Does it affect your children? Does it affect your future? The things that people are choosing to mm -hmm. put a flag in the ground and argue about? So much energy wasted in the wrong direction. But so for Astro Lore Authentic Astrology, she says, expect the unexpected. Today is the day to plan for the future. Work toward those plans, a reality. Can you say that, Terry? Don't scatter your efforts. The moon is in Capricorn. Don't scatter your efforts. Um, use today to work towards something specific, significant, long-term goals. So focus on what matters in your own purview. And I think this is what gets so overwhelming is because we focus on these big pictures and, and the government and the military and the planet and the animals and the future. And, and it's like, okay, pull it back. Focus on you, what matters in your life. And I'm really looking forward to hitting the road to go to that convention because I'll just be focusing on what meeting people and having fun. And then when I go to Egypt, I'm going to focus on learning what I have to learn. I'm actually looking forward to not using the internet. Yeah. And just focusing, yeah. like, because I end up opening up online and like my sister will say this too, like as soon as you turn the computer on, boom, the news little things pop up. You hadn't even made it to a website yet. The news pops up and you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Distraction, distraction, distraction. Go to Facebook. Somebody's sharing some crazy stuff. Distraction, distraction, distraction. Like we hit on Telegram and then we we got one intention. I'm going to send Terry this message. Oh no, I read 15 articles and it's like, rain it in. How do we rain it in and start living in our reality again versus being concerned about so many things that don't concern you? So I guarantee that Terry's going to pull these cards. And I'm telling you, I just know the theme of the day is going to have something to do with our reality. Okay. So, so the I'm cards, doing. I'm going to do some, uh, did you just want to say something, Jonathan? I said, it, and, and to sum up what, what Eric was saying, it's kind of like that prime directive. Like, when do we know that? stop floating in the sea of that information that we already know, right? Right. Right. Can I mention something? Go for it. Yeah. This reminds me a lot of the like dopamine overload that the society has really um, encumbered themselves into. New information, scrolling, you know, all of that is just giving us dopamine boosts a little bit at a time which really takes us away from the reality and the life that we're creating for ourselves or that we have been given and that we're living in. So I agree with everything that mm -hmm. Cosmic Oracle, Cosmic Mama was saying. Um, but I think it's important for people, and it, I mean, it's not going to be for everybody, but you know, for our conscious selves, the ones that we're aware, to do like a dopamine detox. Like you said, you know, shut off the computer. Don't go on the internet. Just like go back to really simplistic things and detox the whole body from these dopamine overload moments um, and gain, you know, appreciation and joy from doing your regular things. Like, you know, 15 years ago or like when I was a kid, like we used to go knocking on each other's doors and, hey, can so-and-so play? And like there was no calling. There was no, you know, constant connection to now the whole entire world like it's it's crazy but just need to take a step back really mm -hmm. so 
So with that, Shadell, I, I read an article. <laughs> I read an article <laughs> that, that says um, that um, some of the, you know, the, whatever they're putting in the stuff is actually uh, there's something designed in it to um, um, uh, modify the way that our brain creates dopamine so that we have a dopamine deficiency. And that's what a lot of these things do. So isn't that interesting? You're talking about that because we want more dopamine by doing this. And what's being given us is designed. To, and I think it's even in the food. I, I think that's actually what it, what it was. Not only this, but what's in the food systems and, and some of the chemicals that they're putting in the prepared foods actually uh, create a deficiency in dopamine. Oh, totally. Everything in processed mm. foods, like the increase in sugar, like it, it's all a super dopamine boost every single time. Yeah. Um, and I think that this whole system is a little bit rigged on that towards, yeah. you know, um, creating these deficiencies and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> so what I'm going to do for a group for a group reading is I'm actually going to through, pull from three decks. So the first deck I'm going to pull from is the map by Colette Baron Reed, and um, I'm I'm going to see how this all. Let's see. Okay, we're going to choose three cards. As a, as a collective. Uh, so interesting. We've got coming apart, encouragement, and slow and steady. So, <laughs> so it's not, isn't that interesting how this is just sort of working about, I mean, we don't even need to, just the whole idea of coming apart we are everything is coming up to the surface and coming apart so what we thought our society was based on is like it's all coming apart so uh that's not a bad thing it's time it, it, it's part of an evolutionary process that we all need to go through as a collective so um like i said before you know we who have been working on this we've crossed that bridge and so we become that lighthouse so then that's where we become that encouragement is for the others that 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 can see us and say oh okay they made it so let let's let's just go across there so that encouragement is <clears throat> pardon me we were there to encourage people and it's not to um it's not to fall into the um, um, the abyss that that wants to pull us in. We have to just sort of step, take a step back. That maybe that means that we just need to go into our heart space. Because hey, look, what is this? Is a the two giraffes? It's 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 that encouragement. It they've almost forming a heart. So maybe it's about us going into the heart space, centering ourselves, taking a step back. And just saying that this is just chaos that has to be has to surface so that it can be cleared. We've stepped over the bridge, and the ones that are coming over um, <clears throat> are, are ready to create the the new reality. However, that's going to be so. A new reality is created. How do we create? We create based on on the past. So it's important to leave a lot of those past things behind so that we don't have all that baggage. When they come over, we can start from a, a new process by connecting to higher realms. And so th the message is it's, it's slow and steady because we can't have it happen like that. It's, it's a process that needs to work its way through. And it's important that we use that encouragement card. We, we stand our ground so that that pace, that steadiness can work its way through. And so I like it because I feel like it just really goes along with exactly what we're saying to like break apart and let some things go, get it out of, get right. some things out of your face. But then I, that, that snail for the slow and steady, that's a person that's focused and looking one direction. Right. 
and right. and going on the path, like we said, we're on our way to California. We didn't get stopped in all these small towns. Pull yeah. it back, just stay on the road, and 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 build in your area. Focus on your goals. That's right. And we, each, we each have we each have have a gift, and so when we so. So look at it as being a, a path a, a, a path creator, right? Is like I don't know, you know, anybody who's grown up where there's snow, right? Is like if you have a big snowstorm and you're walking in a path, well, trudging that path is is a challenge. But if you're the person behind, you take the same steps footsteps that I've taken. Only your your steps now you don't actually fall into the same steps. There's probably you you probably slip a little bit more. The third person, the fourth person, all of a sudden there's a path created wherever you're taking it. And so it's important to realize that you're not going to make a mistake. You're just going to you're 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 trudging a path into what you see as um, as a, a collective. Um, place to go and so that path is going to start to meander the more people that go through it but you you know you're the one who's actually created the path and it's always hard being the one trudging the path the ones that come behind you know it's like easy to do it but but at the beginning it isn't so easy but just trust that you if you're centered in your heart then you can move through things with that knowledge that you're being divinely guided um, through your higher self, through your connection with source, and that you're not going to make a mistake. And if it if it turns out that the hundredth person down the lane decides that it should maybe move this way, so then they're going to bring another another uh, direction to that path. It's okay. But as as those people who are the pioneers or the, the you know trudging the path you do what you can and you trust that you're being divinely guided because how do you know where to go? You're walking in this field of snow that, that you don't know where to go. So you just keep going and you're going to get to a destination. And um, that's always what, that's what moves us forward. And so then that, then the other card that I'm going to pull is from the gateway by Denise Lynn. And we're just going to pull three to add to to this. Haha, <laughs> these are lovely. So the first one is expecting miracles. Miracles are blossoming in your life. So as things come apart, there are miracles that are happening for for us individually. So we can look at this collectively, but this more on an individual basis, how do we move forward? And so uh, the miracles are blossoming in our life. So it's important to, to be in that place of grounding, be in our hearts, and then just see as things start to open up for us because we do have that divine um, guidance that's, that's coming in and, uh, giving us direction so we just have to trust that that is um that that we're we're doing things the right way and so um, then the next card is looking deeper deep within me is a majestic radiance so that is saying with that encur uh, it, it's coming on uh, with the encouragement card that looking deeper is connecting to that source within us to our uh, connecting with our heart space that heart space is what connects us to our higher self which has the overall view not this only this third dimensional view and so when we look into that deeper space then we connect with what it is that we really um are meant to do when we when we move forward and how to move forward and how to hold the energy so that this transition is one that we are comfortable with um, within ourselves because this is why we came. Whether we came, you know, 
60 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, we came to be here at this time. This is pivotal um, in, in the whole galactic history or the universal history for that matter. And so we have it within us from our source, from our higher self, that we have the special gifts that we need to, um, to hold the energy and, and, and be that lighthouse on the other side of the bridge. And uh, so slow and steady comes with embarking on an adventure. Um, I savor the wonders of the world. So I can say of the world, but also of whatever is happening in this time of transition. So this is an adventure. And um, um, someone said yesterday, actually, it was was uh, Chris Sinatra I was watching. Um, but he said, you know, like if we look at it as a game, we are the master players in, uh, of any game to in order to be here at this time. We are meant we are the best of the best, and so this is an adventure. We came here not remembering all of the past, but we came here to bring the and hold the energy, and this is an adventure that our soul is capable of. of um, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Um, is capable of holding and, and, and sharing with everyone. So, any comments? Okay. So then the next deck that I'm going to pull is the Gratitude Oracle uh, by Angelina Hartfield. And so I think um, I, was, I was guided to use this one uh, for gratitude because I believe that... Um, there is that aspect of us that feels like, ah, am I doing the right thing? The answer is yes, we are. And don't second guess ourselves. But I think that um, when we look at it, we can, we can move forward each day with gratitude um, that we have done the best. So I'm going to pull three cards from this. So the first one I picked was energy, and it's this beautiful uh, lion, winged lion, um, just moving through the uh, universe, and she's on his back. Uh, he's got the, the, the curls, the horns. Um, so this is a majestic being. So what this is saying is, expecting miracles coming apart we are divinely um, um, guided there are energies beyond what we see here that are helping to orchestrate what's happening so if we look at that whole idea of there are higher energies we come from that and we have been asked and we volunteer to come down here to be that conduit for those higher energies. And as soon as we allow those energies to work through us, then we don't, we have that confidence and we can be grateful for, for being that individual that these energies, those unique energies are working through. A lot of times we think, what am I supposed to be doing? But maybe it's just being here and grounding those energies so that um, when things do come apart, um, that we can expect the miracles because the energy is there for us. You know, those, those that energy is with us all the time. It's just sometimes we cut ourselves up, but just trust that those higher energies are guiding us um, from an aspect that we don't necessarily always um, uh, are aware of. And so um, the next card is enthusiasm. So looking deeper and encouragement, that enthusiasm is coming and she's a beautiful fairy and so many multicolors. And, and so it's all the colors of creation. And so it's just that point of being encouraged that you are doing everything that you're needing to do. And so just trust 
that um, that that you are in the right place at the right time. You are starting that path, however it's going, wherever it's going, just do it with enthusiasm. It's like, I'm going through this and wherever it takes me is where we're going. And whoever follows is going to follow. So do it with enthusiasm and not like, oh, I got to do this again. No, it's like, look, I'm here <laughs> right now. This is pivotal. And with these energies right now, this is the time to just gather that enthusiasm and and let it move through us and the last one oh she's so pretty but is understanding understanding that this adventure that we're embarking on even though it's going to be slow and steady is this is why we came this is what we're here to do and so over this next time we're just going to look at this as being those long-term goals and understanding that this is we are setting the the foundation we are we are setting that path and we don't know where it's going to go but we're the ones who are those 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 pioneers those those people who are on the road and so wherever it takes us just understand that it is an adventure that we're embarking on and any adventure, you know what what they, they say. It's not the um, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. So think of this as the journey and this grand adventure that we're on, and understanding that that's where it is. And it may be slow at times. Sometimes it'll speed up. Sometimes it may feel like it's going backwards. But we're on the path to um, something beautiful. And. That's my my take on the energies these days. Any any comments? Jonathan, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I mean, that, that was kind of the whole concept of of going being in places where you're meant to, you know, to bring your light and bring that light. I mean, in the past, I mean, the past week or last week's reading for me going through being in my balance and being amongst, you know, I mean, uh, chaos. I mean, it was exactly that. And it was really to, it was, you know, being able to hold space for, for people that, yeah, you know, that, um, you know, they're in challenging situations with addictions and stuff. And, starting uh, new jobs and really observing, but, um, and, you know, just sharing a little bit of uh, compassion and that empathy, but, you know, just, you know, allowing them to, to, to feel a little bit, you know, and, and, and have some more questions. Um, and opposed to when, you know, other times they were, um, you know, in their, in their pattern, right? Um, and so moving throughout the weekend, it was, it was exactly, exactly that. Um, it was pretty chaotic. It was a lot of, of challenges, but, um, you know, it really allowed me to just observe my path as well. And just in all the, all the souls and all the soul family around me. Um, and that, you know, when I really was, having that downtime to um, to try to reground, it was that I would go, I would either do a meditation or I would, you know, go outside and, you know, try to connect back to nature, go walk on the riverbank, you know, um, and it was, you know, it was, it was, and, you know, the synchronicities would come back and, and bring that, that, those confirmations and the, just the nourishment that was needed. Um, and I even even oh you know open them up to you know some of the the crystal technology how crystals interact with our bodies and and with the intentions and what we use things with so allowing um, that information to you know assist them in that subconscious level um, with the whole concept of intentions and everything without inundating them with uh, without with their with what they're with their balances, right? And um, 
So it, it's been a, yeah, it's a very accurate, accurate um, reading and journey there. And it's really about stay, being quiet and flowing with what we feel we need to engage with and, and finding um, and being that pathway, creating that path and just be beaming that light so people can see the path, right? Um, yeah. We lost camera. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I was taking pictures of the decks and I'll, I'll post them in a second. All right. So any comments, any comments, uh, Erica? Mm -hmm. um, I guess like we continue to say, I think the message is pretty consistent that it's your time to go, go for it and with all your heart and just remain confident and bold in what you're seeking. Um, the more bold you are with what you ask for, the more powerful, you know, the receiving is because we, we can't really shrink away and be minimal in what we're asking out of life. You know what I mean? Because that just means to live life without power. You, you have the power but we limit ourselves with our expectations. And I think we need to continue to be enthusiastic, but more enthusiastic. I think for a few years, I was afraid to ask for a mate. I was afraid to ask for, I, not, and I didn't really have a big picture of what is it that I want out of this life? And I was unable to, do a vision board or anything because I just really wasn't sure. And, and that's okay. We hit that time where we're not really sure, but now if we can narrow our focus to the internal things that are going on inside of us, what drives us, what's, what's my passion? What do I feel strongly about? What, what gift do I want to give to the world? And what is driving me now, I can say, I want and I desire and I can create that in my life. For a long time, for the two years, which now this is the third year, I was observing and I tried not to do things that I saw other people do. Like I saw my friends reading tarot cards, I was like, Okay, I learned how to do it. I tried not to do it. I saw everything I saw people doing. I was learning. I was learning it or understanding it. But I was like, no, I don't want to be a part of the fray. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. I want to do what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I've taken my time, like it said, slow and steady to find the thing that really and, and is important to me. And so, you're, too, you're like... That path. And two, I didn't, the idea of like, I want a million subscribers, like, no, I actually don't, because I really don't want to talk to everybody, and I don't want to argue with people, like, I really want to focus on people who care about what I care about. I don't want to be a person who's, like, attracting people that want to argue attracting people that want to debunk me or disprove me. Like I want to stay away from all of that. And I really have been focused on send me people that can love me and I can love them in return. Send me friendships that I can enjoy and embrace, you know, 
Um, especially like us as women, even as men, like you want to have a real brother or a real sister. And I want, and so some of us haven't experienced that at home. And so that's one of the things that I was actually asking for. And I'm like gaining like so many sisters, even though I have seven in real life. But me and Terry were talking about this, like, as I see Terry more like my sister, but like she said, we really don't have like, demographically anything in common she's in canada i'm in florida she's white i'm black she's older i'm younger well you know like uh she's had like a firm relationship for 40 some odd years uh, the longest i was married was four years okay so it's like like we have like you know i was a lab technician she's been to china i've been to germany like we we're like very much different but fundamentally on a heart level on a level of communication and respect on these different levels, like, no, we actually have a pretty powerful relationship where we can talk on a daily basis. And then, you know, when you think about your spouse or your the person that you're dating, how these relationships can run out because it's like, oh, well, we really don't have much else to talk about because if we're not relating on a spiritual level, we don't really have any real connection, you know? Because that's the true connection is our spirits, mutual respect, communication, things like that. Do we care about the same things? And are we respectful of one another? And so now here it is, real relationships. I started asking last year for real relationships with people that I can love and respect. And so I'm seeing the door open and and, and these things happening where I don't I don't want a bunch of attention from people that hate me, don't like me, or don't understand me. I really just want to focus on the people that love me and that I can give love in return. People who know how to even receive love because some people don't. So I'm seeing this door open. And so now as I'm saying, this is what I truly desire in my life, I can see it happening. So that, that, all of the messages, all of the cards, I feel like for me, just confirm, yup, just keep going slow and steady, calm down. You know, you're not doing it as fast as you want, calm down. Just keep adding. Well, I mean, you have that, you have the encouragement behind us, right? And there's, yeah, encouragement, enthusiasm, and doing it with joy, doing the things that you love. And really think about that. Because some people are school teachers and they think it's because they're going to get a paycheck and it's going to, you know, or whatever the job, a nurse. Most people get jobs as nurses, not because that's what they love. Like, really think about the fact that if you never got paid for something, would you still do it? Yeah, I would still come on here and talk. I would still have done all those YouTube videos. I'd have still done all the things that I've done because that's I was having fun doing it like it was a job but a job that I love, like, you know, so I encourage people to just really get into things that they really, really, if, because then you don't worry about how many people are watching me and how much money I made and how much, you know, because that stuff can be a distraction. We're, We're finding the things that we have passion that drive us. That allows us to continue to be enthusiastic instead of being bitter. And, and that's um, that's what what you know when I talked about treading that path is we have our we each have our own path. I mean we're all going to go in a slightly different direction, and we will have people that walk with us on the path for a lot of you know a lot of the way, and then they'll veer off to another direction and they'll create another path. But you know it's taking those first steps and being brave enough to be the first one to to tread in that knee high snow right you you're just you're just going to take the step and where it goes you you don't know but you're doing it with joy and knowing that you have the encouragement from from those higher sources that are just flowing into us and and we it's just opening up opening up and trusting that we are connected to that and not everybody's going to be able to do this but i think that the people who are listening and watching this they're the ones who 
have that ability to just step out and be bold and be that person to to take those first steps. And so we just accept, we accept that. We accept within ourselves. Mm -hmm. That deep down feeling of, of what is our natural way of life, of what, you know, brings that that resonance of, of harmony to us, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Are you guys, are you guys reading people individually today or is it group reading? I did a group reading, but uh, I can, yeah, I can do an individual reading, but I don't know if we had any, anybody else wanted to say anything about the group reading. I know Erica, you were recording it, right? Yeah. All right. So we'll shut that down. This is May 9th, 2023. <laughs> Thank you for participating. Thank you. Much love.